It is Thursday, June 21st. Thank you all for tuning back into the channel. Today's focus topic on the video is Sprint Network performance as it relates to their upload speeds. I'll be focusing on that. Then there's a quickie from Verizon and then some deals for you guys. So I'll jump right into the Sprint um, Open Signal report. The data collecting company Open Signal uh, runs many reports on network performance. Uh, this particular topic revolves around a very, very slow upload speeds that a lot of customers have been complaining about in terms of you know, performance when they're trying to upload content, you know, as creators and things of that nature, uh, they're reporting that the speeds are very, very slow. Now, Open Signal has run the report, they've collected a lot of data, and they've also acknowledged this to be true. And Open Signal reports that this is likely due to the LTE technology that Sprint is using. So, to kind of summarize, all the carriers have chosen a certain LTE technology for their particular network. Verizon and T Mobile have very good average upload speeds nationally usually stay around 7 megabits per second. Uh, Sprint usually around 2.5 megabits per second. Uh, and of course Sprint has also been cited as having very poor latency, very low latency uh, values, or uh, very high latency values. PC Mag also corroborates this and reports that Verizon and T-Mobile, the upload averages around 19 megabits per second, so they say it's even faster. And then Sprint around 4.4. So those are two different companies uh, independent of each other that are citing similar uh, data. So Open Signal actually blames the TDLTE technology that's used for Sprint's 2.5 gigahertz uh, frequency bands. Now the reason for this is they say it's a shared frequency for downlink and uplink, and unlike the other uh, companies which do things a little bit differently, the other big three carriers they separate downlink and uplink data streams. So Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile use FDD LTE for this purpose. So these carriers can actually allocate more time for the downlink data. And because of the higher demand for the downlink data, most people are uh, using, you know, download capacity and need download speeds for that reason. So Sprint did modify the LTE network last year to increase, you know, download speeds on their network, but it came at the cost of the upload speeds. So it's a complete and total trade-off. Sprint says that 80 to 90 percent of their data traffic on their network is download-based. So it does make sense that they, you know, have shifted some of their allocation of their resources to the download side, but it did come at a cost. So you guys can see here on this visual on the on the screenshot, you know, this kind of shows you network performance by upload by carrier. You could see T-Mobile and Verizon are well ahead of the other two, AT&T at, you know, just over 4 megabits per second and Sprint really struggling with 2 megabits per second. Now, I think most people probably don't care about upload, but in the occasion that you might need to use it, Sprint's just not getting the job done and now we can understand why. So I know I've had questions from a lot of different, you know, subscribers as to why Sprint perform so poorly in upload. I, I just thought this would be a good way to inform you guys as to why it is the case. Now I'm going to switch over a quickie for Verizon. The new Above Unlimited plan is now available. Their new premium offering priced at $95 per month for one line. It does get cheaper with multiple lines. So if that's something that you want to consider, it's now available to you. Uh, keep in mind it is at HD video resolution. There is a 75 gigabyte non-deprioritized non soft data cap, 20 gigabytes of tethering or hotspot data, um, definitely check into that if you want to see all the different details. You can now also mix and match family plans. So you could choose between Go, Beyond, or Above Unlimited plans, depending line to line on all of the lines on your plan. And I'll leave you guys with some deals. Uh, this is coming from Verizon. You can get the Samsung Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, or Note 8 on a deal. The S9 is 280 off, the S9 Plus is 290, and then the Note 8 is 310 off. No trade-ins are required. However, you can still trade in devices to receive discounts. Uh, the discount is instant. Uh, you must put the devices on installed payment plans. So it does actually kind of, you know, it's you're pretty much locked into Verizon for two years. Uh, Samsung is also offering $200 off the S9 and S9 Plus, and then $300 off the Note 9. So if this is a better deal for you, consider going through Samsung. You won't be tied into a long-term deal with a carrier. Uh, Samsung is also offering $300 on a trade-in for the S8. And they'll give you 150 off if you trade in the S7. And these rebates are instant, no payment installations, no credits, or anything like that. And the last deal is from Best Buy, $400 off the Google Pixel 2 XL. It is a Verizon model. This will put you on Verizon for two years, uh, you know, putting it on device installment payments. Uh, but the same, I think actually what they're doing is they're, they're breaking down the $400 rebates into two parts. $200 off instantly, and then $200 off in bill credits. So each month you'll get a certain amount of money off of your bill. So coming in as bill credits. That's it for this video, guys. 
I'm just kind of, you know, wanted to inform you guys about what's going on with the Sprint Network. A lot of questions were being raised there. And then the Verizon news and the deal. So anything of interest to you, hit me up in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I like interacting with you guys. Believe it or not, I read all of the comments. So go ahead and drop me a line down below. Thanks again for watching. This is Steve from Steve Mobile Tech. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Peace.